speaker of today uh, is a plenarist. He's uh, Professor Ralf, Ralf Stoyer, uh, who is very well known uh, for his work on uh, multiple uh, criteria, criteria decision making uh, and also on portfolio selection. Uh, we share something important uh, with uh, Professor Stoyer. We came, we both come from Athens. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's from Athens, Georgia, <coughs> and I'm from Athens, Greece. It is funny because every time I go to a website to see the weather, the first choice is Athens, Georgia, usually, <laughs> <laughs> because they are American websites. So, so Professor Stoyer is going to speak about uh, exactly translated in Markowitz mean variance portfolio selection to a third criteria. Okay, thank you. Um, you have a large sum of money. Maybe you're a pension fund or a mutual fund. And you, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, there are a lot of securities out there that you could invest in. And you want to spread your money around. So you want to pick which securities to invest in and then how much. Okay? Now, for 60 years, there has been the Markowitz model of a mean variance portfolio selection. It is still, after 60 years, the dominant model. But investing is getting more complex. People not only want high return and low risk, they want portfolios that satisfy additional criteria. For instance, social responsibility, um, maybe liquidity, dividends. So <clears throat> the purpose here is to take the model that has been dominant for 60 years and show how it can be extended to a third criterion, where the first criterion is to, to maximize return and minimize risk, and then the other one is to maximize something else. Okay. Now, uh, I work with other colleagues on this, some people from Germany, some people from China. So it's not only my work. Okay. All right, so what you have out there uh, are N approved securities. And because I'm assuming that you're a pension fund or a mutual fund, N is maybe 1,000 or 2,000 different securities. See, people have worked on this portfolio selection problem, and they've done a pretty good job when N is 20 or 30 or 40. But the real challenge is how do we get to 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000? Because that, that's a feasible number now with all the data that's available. <coughs> so uh, the traditional model is, whoops, is um, you want to maximize expected return because this is about the future. So it's, a st it's really fundamentally a stochastic programming problem. And while doing that, you want to minimize the risk of, uh, of taking a loss. So what you have is, is two criteria that you're trying to optimize simultaneously. So there's not a single solution. There's a, there's a, a range of solutions. So, the, uh, um, so what we have here is that uh, your solution is called, or the solution to this problem with two criteria is a set of solutions. Sometimes they're called non-dominated. Other people prefer the term Pareto optimal. Sometimes you'll hear the term non-inferior, uh, efficient, it all means the same thing. <clears throat> so like, for instance, a point here on the, uh, on the curve, this is, might be for a young person who's willing to take a lot of risk, because risk is measured by standard deviation or variance, and to, get, to get a high return. And then maybe a person who's in retirement, they don't, they're afraid of risk. They're willing to accept less return because they don't want to face uh, risk. So it's almost in a way that people are up here, and as they get older, they move down the curve. Okay? So, so a, an investor's challenge here is to be presented with this curve, appropriately calculated, and then the investor looks at the curve and then subjectively picks the best point on it, and that will identify that investor's optimal portfolio. 
So this is just the, def just the definition of non-dominated. You know, I think maybe, maybe you're familiar, maybe more familiar with the term Pareto optimal. And um, what it means is that you can't improve one criterion without deteriorating another. Okay. So, and, and in finance, it's very important to see the whole, all non-dominated solutions. And the reason is um, because in finance, generally a person doesn't like their optimal solution. And the only way they select, they, they agree to accept <clears throat> a given solution as optimal is by seeing that everything else is worse. So that means you have to show all potentially optimal solutions. And then the person will feel comfortable uh, with, a, with a, uh, a solution that they would not have accepted if it was just presented to them in a vacuum. Okay, so it's necessary in, in this type of problem to show the full set of candidates for optimality. And what the non-dominated frontier shows us is if a point is on what is called the non-dominated or efficient frontier, it could be optimal for a given investor. If a point is not on that curve, it can't be optimal for anybody. Okay. So this is, this in, in bi-criterion format, uh, sh shows the, uh, 